This is the village of Tonyaz. It's a remote village in Belarus, which is in Eastern Europe and is surrounded by Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, Russia, and Ukraine. This village was established in 1551, but some say it goes back as far as the 13th century. Things move just a little bit slower here. So here I am getting a drink of water from a well. Sure, no. I've been getting the same water from the same well since I was about five years old. I remember being a little kid running around getting exhausted and there was nothing quite like taking a cold sip of water from this well. Just like there's nothing quite like sitting down and talking to the farmers. Yes. Mm. Oh, and the house behind us is my grandmother's. And this is my grandmother. She's a very accomplished singer and has performed in places like Russia, Poland, and of course all over Belarus. But let's get back to her house for a second. It was built in 1957 by my grandfather Michael, who actually helped build a lot of the houses in this village. The layouts were pretty standard. Usually it was a bungalow with two to three bedrooms, a couple of living spaces, a kitchen, but funny enough, they actually didn't have bathrooms inside the home, so they used outhouses for the most part. I know you're thinking it, and yes, I've used that outhouse a million times. Back in the day, my grandparents had a ton of livestock. Chickens, pigs, cows, you name it. As time went on, the bigger animals were a little bit more difficult to take care of, but we still have those chickens. This right here is actually one of the places where I learned to ride a bike as a little kid. I would hop on one of these and just gun it throughout the village. Going a little ride. All right, let's talk about Belarus for a second. The country has a population of about 9.5 million people, with the most populated city being the capital of Minsk. Minsk is actually pretty well known for their high level IT and gaming industry. It's a beautiful place to visit and is not oversaturated with tourists just yet. No other Belarusian city has more than 500,000 people in it and a large percentage of the population lives in smaller towns and villages like this. Belarus is also well known for their manufacturing of tractors, dump trucks and other heavy metal equipment. Agriculture is very important as well and accounts for nearly 10% of their gross domestic product and the country usually leads all ex-USSR nations in dairy and meat production per capita. I always remember having the best meat, cheese, milk, all that kind of stuff in my grandmother's house in Tonyaz. It was just so fresh. Oh, and this is the white stork, the international symbol of Belarus. Despite its natural beauty, this village and many others like it around the country are getting smaller and smaller. People are moving to bigger cities and leaving houses like these unattended. Yesterday, there was actually a house right here. So, one that looked like that, and it was right here. These guys just took it down just because there's nobody living there, right? So, there's no point of keeping it up above ground because it starts rotting, it starts becoming bad for the surrounding environment. Very sad. So basically, when a house is vacant for too long and it starts rotting, the municipality comes in and buries it underground. But on a more positive note, here I am pulling up to THE village store. Produce usually comes a couple of times a week and there's definitely plenty of liquor to go around. Funny enough, Belarus is near the top of the list for global alcohol consumption per capita. Take a look at that selection. One of those bottles of vodka will run you between two and five dollars. Now, in terms of agriculture, the rich, nutritious Belarusian land is perfect for growing crops. For hundreds of years, people here have been living off the land. Wild mushrooms, cranberries, blueberries, and of course, potatoes. Belarus has established itself as one of the most potato-loving countries in the world. Большие, 
A gnilia. Gnilia kidayu. Oh, and you know I had to give you guys a close-up of those piglets in the background. Like in a lot of Eastern European countries, fishing is extremely popular in Belarus. My family has a tradition that after a long day on the lake, we cook some mean ucha. Honestly, it makes my mouth water every time I think about it. Okay, everybody, follow along. I want to show you how a traditional ucha is made. Ucha is a traditional Belarusian fish soup. So right this way. This is Kolya, he's my uncle. Dennis, that's my cousin. Uh, Kolya, what are we doing here? Can you explain? Okay, сначала что? Вначале бросаем картошечку, лучок, морковку. После того, когда сварится картошечка, мы бросаем рыбку. This is freshly caught. We just caught it uh, this morning. After everything comes to a boil, you throw in the fish. So there's four different types of fish. Unfortunately, I don't get to come to Tonya's too often, but when I do, that ucha cookout is something I always look forward to. Why is this bread? Then, when it burns, it burns at the end. So if you look, the ones on the top are ready. It's beautiful. Красиво, красиво. I can't wait to try this. Honestly, I really do feel grateful that I get to sit down with family and talk about life in a traditional setting with a traditional meal. The people in Belarus and the people in Tonyash are extremely friendly. But this village does have a bit of a dark past and I have to touch on it. My grandfather's brother Gregory explained it to me in pretty vivid detail, but I'll summarize it for you. In 1943, when the Nazis invaded Belarus, they came to this village. They gathered 268 people in a church right here, saying they would give everybody a new German passport. And they actually ended up just burning the church down, killing 267 of the 268 people there. So one woman survived. These were mostly young kids, women, and older people because everyone else was fighting off in the war. So here's a memorial and statues that commemorate all the lives that were lost on that day. So on my second last day, we took the off-road vehicle to go set up some fishing nets and go for a swim in a nearby lake. This Belarusian backcountry is absolutely gorgeous. Like, take a look at these sunset views. Черное море. Куда Черное море и близко не стояло. Там его то Черное море уже черное, а тут, блин, закат солнца. Парни, закат солнца это вообще чудо. Ой, 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 какие пацаны, блин. Это 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 сынуля, это сынуля и племяш, племяш, иностранец, иностранец. 
Иностранец. Кубинец, канадец. Дробын, дробын, дробын Александр. Бородатый вот это дробин. Вот это вот бородатый плывет. Дробин. А сынуля нырнул. О, выныривает, выныривает. Глаза прищурил. Ой, красота. Какие пацаны, блин. Яйчики потрясли. Води... Потрясли, потрясли, Какого трусики, потрясли. Теплая, Молодцы, да. хлопчики. Ой-ой-ой, вот это наше озеро. Озеро это наше. All in all, Belarus is a place you should put on your travel list. You can have a crazy time in a big city like Minsk, but if you really want to dig deep into the tradition and culture of the country, visit a village like Donyaz. It'll open up your mind and broaden your horizons. It's a magical place for me, a place of family and friendships. This visit was great, and let's hope the next one will be even better. I'll be back soon. Let's go. Hello! Привет!